Hello YouTube, welcome back. Had a little mishap, fell in the back of the shop to clean up. Going to winterize the Plymouth and I fell off of a straightening jig, hit my head, hit my arm. Anyway, I was going to winterize the Plymouth and you know that Faye's been helping me with the Plymouth and I needed a helping hand, at least one helping hand. Made a phone call, Faye was right over helped me out and we got the car winterized. What we were doing um, this past weekend was the fuel system. And it actually starts into winterizing the complete car. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit about it, but what we're doing in this video is we're winterizing the fuel system for long-term storage. Here in Texas, we don't actually do something long-term. Um, you can drive all the time, it does get cold, but we don't have to put a car away for three or four months. But I still want to store it. Um, one of the other vehicles in my shop at home is a Mercedes that hadn't even been parked that long in my garage. And that fuel system has already gone bad. And I had just done the fuel system. So it doesn't take long. So what we're doing is we're treating the fuel system um, with a stable product that actually um, will treat not only the fuel, but the metal, the lines and everything. And then we fogged it. So uh, by doing uh, fogging, we actually run the motor. We fog inside of the carburetor. You could do it through the throttle body, 10 seconds. I did it till the engine just died. Pull the spark plugs and fog the inside of it as well. Uh, we'll just go ahead and show you how to do it. But I wanted to just start off the video just letting you know I'm okay. Once again, it was not shop mom. It's nice to have good friends that you can just pick up the phone and literally we're going to start the video. She just drove right over to help me out. Hey, dude. I have everything we need for winterization. Let me show you what I what I brought. All right, so this is this is the winter storage bundle. All right, so when we need it again, starting fluid because we know we're gonna need this. Then I've got some rust stopper. This we're probably gonna use today, right? Because we've seen some of like the rust that's happened on like underneath yes. the horizon. So this is gonna be perfect for just you know putting it away for all storage. The, yeah. Then we've got some carbon choke parts cleaner, also for when we take it back out of storage. And then we've got this fogging oil. So this you put into the intake and then disconnect the fuel line basically and then run it until it stops. And then this will sort of make a whole coating inside the engine and this will protect any surface rust or anything like that happens. So then lastly, we've got two, and these could both be used for race fuel. And we've got the 360 protection and we've got the storage. Now the 360 protection is for like short term storage. So I wasn't sure which one Danny was gonna need so I brought them both. Um, so the 360, this is for a few months, you know, with ethanol in our fuel. And obviously this is, you know, this is race fuel we've got in the horizon, but for, um, for ethanol, you know, your fuel can start to go bad after just a few months. So this, even if you're only planning on storing for like two months, this is good or longer term, you know, six months, nine months, maybe a few years, like someone's projects. Uh, we've got the long term. So we got them both, both safe for race fuel. And uh, yeah, so that's everything I brought. So some of this we're gonna use today. Some of this we're gonna use later on. So this but, will prep uh, not only the engine, but also the components around there, which is, we work so hard to get it all ready. We and work so kind of... hard, exactly. All right, let's get it uncovered and this has been stored just for, but already even three months is a long yeah, time on fuel. Definitely. So this hasn't been stored that long, but now it's gonna go to a little bit longer storage. You know, and also too, there's so much of a project car, just getting started is half the battle. You know that saying, once begun, you're halfway done? <laughs> yeah. It's so true, it's so true. And you know, just getting started is hard. Sometimes you need like a buddy to help you out or like a kickstart of some sort. Yeah, today. And the worst part, I think, of pulling any vehicle out of storage is draining the fuel. Do you remember mm -hmm. having oh, to do that? Oh, the smell, like, the, the, the old tank. Finding somewhere we, to put it. We just changed or, out the tank. Yes. The tank wasn't rotted, but it wasn't worth, it really wasn't. If there's a, a, a tank available, that was a smart thing. Yes. And then you do it all, and then time is not on your side. Yeah. <laughs> We're already in, not, not even that long, but we've even kind of discussed a little bit, a month or two with fuel, um, you know, we're in Texas, we drive our cars all the time. This is a car that doesn't get driven, you know, it's not that kind of car, but 
we don't know normally in texas we don't put a car away for storage for three or four months right everybody up north which are kind of a feel for them they've already done their last run they've they've winterized it and they still oh, yeah. for three months they, they don't... probably winterized two or three months ago <laughs> yes yeah. see so so th that is so even though we don't have those long winters we've got to store away we have a, a situation of a uh, a historic car that we're not going to drive so we're going to store it like a long-term storage but yeah so, so you well, know and another point on that too is that when there are like winter like true winter conditions there's additives in that fuel like northern fuel is different than southern fuel so they have those anti-gelants anti-coagulants those those additives that will sort of help that fuel we don't. Yes, <laughs> and they, you're, you're right. They have different blends. Yeah. And different blends for different, um, a winter blend and a summer blend. You know, in the summer, we don't want to vaporize fuel, but we do. But, <laughs> yeah. for, but for the most part, for the EPA, you know, you don't want to vaporize fuel. Uh -huh. So there is the, the different fuels. Mm -hmm. So not everybody in the country is even talking about the same fuel. So true. But yeah, and, <laughs> and fuel used to be something we never even talked about. Now it's the number one thing is going to stop this. And we've done so much work on this. Yeah, um, we, we, don't have, wanna, we don't want to have to redo it. No, and then this is turbocharged. Yep. <laughs> right what do we say it's a homogenizer it's a vaporizer doesn't have a turbocharger but in in a sense it's it's essentially if you looked at it it'd be a turbocharger right. so how do you winterize a turbocharged car mm. how do you winterize so this has a lot of the things that i guess a lot of y'all are going to be worried you know people have turbo cars they're going to store away yeah is it the same to store a turbo car from a non-turbo car well and then also we've got the race fuel in there mm -hmm. so what are we going to do about that you know do we use the same products for a turbocharged car or or not or you know for for a race fuel for a car yes. that is race do we fuel? drain it all out yeah and then leave it because here's another thing people don't realize on fuel and i used to i'm old school and this was something that was taught to me by you know older people telling you Drain all the fuel. Drain all the fuel. You know what the worst thing you can do to a gas tank? Leave it drain dry. Drain all the fuel. Yes. Leave it dry. You don't want it's to. It's metal. And it, every yeah. morning there's condensation. Right. So even though uh, uh, what might be better for the fuel, to get rid of all the fuel, it's not good for the tank. Right. So an empty tank is not a good thing. Maybe, you know, if there's one nugget, if there's a you know nugget you find in this whole video series, you might find something that saves you. But leaving a tank empty, you want to leave it full. Yes. And then how do you protect a full tank of gas? Oh, and what a, what a pain. I actually have a video on that. Let me grab one of the... Because I removed two fuel tanks from both of my Supras that were long-term. Long, long, long-term. But I also... I'm small. I don't... I don't... I can't lift up a whole fuel tank and, mm. you know, move it. And I don't want to drain it all out. So what I actually did was I, I used this in both fuel tanks. And then I just had it on a schedule of once a week shaking it up. And I know it sounds like a pain, but I, you know, I, I have a car that I didn't winterize. And so every Sunday I would just get in the habit of starting up that car and just letting it idle for 30 minutes. And when I was doing that, I just walked over right next to the car in storage was my two fuel tanks on the ground with this in it. And I just swished it from side to side and I actually just took one of those fuel tanks out of storage, put it back in the car and checked it and it is spotless inside. But you were the one that taught me that metal sweats. Yes. You know, you were saying you've got to. Every yes, morning, every morning. Exactly, exactly. And you don't realize how quickly that can build up. The one that I had just sort of left, surface rust had taken over and surface rust, it's not bad if you just, if, if it's only there for a few months, but it can, if, if you, you have get Gnarly. Yes, and if you have anything that's fuel injected, which just about everything nowadays is fuel injected, yes. um, this is a unique fuel system and uh, fuel problems and, and that rust going through the tank. I added an extra filter or we had an extra filter just because of that, um, that this didn't have. We added an extra filter to protect any little bit of rust that might be in there. And then talking about uh, uh, sweating every morning, uh, condensation. No, but well, I shouldn't say no, no one because there's a lot of people out there that actually do this, but most people don't think of that. We're talking about the the fuel system right now. Oh yes. What uh -huh. about the combustion chamber? What right. about the piston uh, and the ring? Yes. But yeah, and that's is, what I'm really really excited about. Exactly, and you you mentioned a turbocharged car. This is perfect for a turbocharged car as well. So this is um, this is fogging oil, and you can use this in a few different ways. The most common use of this is small engine stuff. So when you're putting away your lawnmower, you're putting away your weed eater or whatever, you know, that's typically where you see this. But also I coat this on all of my engine blocks, all of my 7M engine blocks, even the bad ones. You can actually just 
spray it on bare metal as well like a rust stopper but most of the time you actually run this through the fuel system itself and then get it inside into the combustion chamber and it will coat the inside of your cylinders the tops of your pistons and even those piston rings so it'll it, just it'll really protect help it and stay on the parts so yeah we'll use this today We'll use this today and another rust preventer. Yep. So I love these because these are gonna stay on the, the parts oh, yeah. and protect they them. Cling. Now so a lot of people say, well let's just put WD forty on it, you know, and it the does WD40 the same thing. Is a is a water displacement for the forty. Exactly water and it displacement. Displaces water. It's not a lubricant, people. Yes. People always say, Oh, just lube it up with WD. It's it's a very temporary lube. And it, this it has a special clings. purpose, yes. Yes. This, like I, I put this on some parts on my Supra and it looks Looks like the day I sprayed it on, like it, it clings to it. And it's, that's what that, that's what you want. And it creates a film. Yes, yes, yes. exactly. You can also use it as a penetrating oil because it creeps, which is which is what we want. You know, we want to get, get it in there, yeah. but it actually will stay and protect. Ooh! So yeah, just for starters, we could we could put the rust stopper all in here, and yeah, we could spray it and then just wipe it down. And if it's something major, you can just go ahead. You know, but but we don't we don't want to do that. We you don't. know, for something like this, we want it we want it to look pretty nice. So, uh, I mean, you can't you can give it a little a little spray, and but it will stay like that. Oh no, because look at it's looking really it thick. Will, I want to get the camera. Too. Yeah, it's thick. super thick. And obviously, when you put this back into into use, you know, dirt obviously can can stick to it and can cling. But I just want to get a nice little surface coating, and if you leave it on there for a while, it'll start to turn like darker. And it actually has a really nice look to it over time. It's like... So it'll embed itself in there and just kind of protect it. Yeah. Because a lot of these things, even when we were doing the engine, and we had a lot of people even saying, why aren't you painting that? Why aren't you painting this? Why aren't you... We were, this is we're more like a restoration. Preserving. We're, we're preserving. preserving. It's a it's a historical vehicle. <laughs> so we could have glass beaded all the little brackets and painted them. And the ones that were, were bad, we most definitely did. But for the most part, this is as found little, in a sense. Even these little bolts. And putting this on also, any of these little bolts that we're going to take off later, if we ever need to, it's going to also help make them easier to loosen. You know, it's going to stop future rust from happening. And it, like I said, it works as a penetrating oil as well. So <laughs> see, we've got a bunch of surface rust here, so we're just going to give it a little coating. Yeah. To remove it, if you want to, high pressure cold water pressure wash. A standard industrial strength pressure washer will suffice. Can also be removed by warm water detergent wash or with commercial grade biodegradable cleaner. So you could spray everything down in a sense and then after winterizing it, just power just wash, pressure wash it off. before yeah. you start. Yeah. Um, and this isn't a climate controlled shop, but most of us don't have climate controlled shops. Yes. I don't even work in a climate controlled well, shop. Well, it is climate controlled. If it's cold outside, it's cold inside. It's <laughs> it's controlled by the climate. The control, <laughs> controlled by shop. Yeah. Well, man, oh man, I love the shine, and it it's looks nice. and it smells awesome. It does uh, smell. Um, which I'm sure that you know harsh smells really you know do affect people, and um, but look at that. So all the stuff on the back firewall, we just essentially just fade just sprayed everything. I did. And it hangs there. Look at that. Look at the the power brake booster. So it will actually stay there. And if you want to go wipe that stuff off, but why? Like I said, to get it off, we can power power wash it at the, the yeah. I'm All right. So okay. now let's move to the interior. Okay. So we're we should put the 360 in the tank and then run it so it gets up to the lines here at the actual, you know, in the actual engine. Okay, cool. And then we'll do the fogging oil to get in the actual engine and coat the cylinders. So I'm excited because <laughs> we're gonna start it. Yeah! It's time, okay. Next, we're gonna take care of the inside. Now, we did just treat the fuel in the fuel tank, so we will have to start the engine and actually get that fuel to run through the fuel lines to make sure that the lines are also coated with the ethanol treatment, the, the 360 protection. But, this is our, is our next, and you've probably seen this for like small engine use, right? Mm -hmm. Like lawnmower, that sort of stuff. So in order to use this, we are going to remove the air cleaner and we're going to actually spray this inside. And then we're gonna run the engine and then shut the engine off after a little bit of time. Then we're gonna remove the spark plugs, spray this down into each one of the cylinders, then turn the engine over by hand just to make sure that we had that full rotation, get this stuff coating the inside of the cylinder walls for every single one, and then we'll put the spark plugs back in and call it a day. So we've got 
Um, our Schumacher jump starter hooked up. We've got it in engine start mode, so it's ready to go. And we checked and we made sure that it had plenty of voltage through the entire system. Now Shall we'll we? pump the gas twice and Now we'll we're start. actually gonna, yeah, all right. Yeah, there we go. All right, there it is. And then we're gonna, how long is it gonna run? 10, 10 seconds. seconds after spraying yep. it. And I guess really, really well. Yep. Oh, perfect. Oh. I thought it really good. I want it. That's what I wanted. Perfect. So we're All done. right. Now, we're, we're, like I said, we've done the fuel system. Yep. Not only the fuel itself, but the tank and everything metal with the protectors in there. We've run it through the carburetor, so it's gone through the whole fuel system. Yep, and we did an oil change recently, too. Yes. So it, the oil's yep. fresh. The oil's fresh because it with condensation, your oil will get moisture in it as well. Yeah. And because of condensation, what have we just done? Now we ran it and we fogged the carburetor while it was running. Yep. I fogged it till it just died. <laughs> uh, um, then we pulled the spark plugs out and fogged all four cylinders. So if you got a V6, V8, fog them all, um, spray it in there really good, and then turn the engine over a few times, have the pistons go up and down a few times, and get that coated everywhere. We're gonna put the plugs back in, and it's ready for yeah, for the winter. Exactly. And we, we and we don't have to pull them out and do anything special when we fire this up. Nope. Just ready to go. All right. All right. We're well, done. Well, cool. Thank you so much for watching yes. this winterization video. I hope you were excited to see us working on the Soki and Plymouth Horizon again. And we know our, our next thing, you know, take it out of winterization mm -hmm. in a few months and start getting ready to hit the track with it. But, uh, but yeah, this yes. is just something that any of y'all can do at home and it's really, really, really important, especially if you're like us and overcoming inertia to work on your own vehicle sometimes um, is, a, is a chore. So, it, hope it, this it is helpful. Yes, thanks for watching and the next video that you'll see on the smoky car will be us bringing it back out of hibernation and the springtime we'll start doing some track time with it heck yeah All so right. thanks for watching see you in our next video bye hope you enjoyed the video what we're going to be doing now with the plymouth in winterizing there's everything it's not just the fuel system we've taken care of the fuel system there's the cooling system um we're going to start doing a little uh, um, a series of videos of how to store your car because you should jack it up and not let the tires sit and get flat spots. So there's the cooling system that needs to be serviced and winterized. There's the fuel system. What else do we have a problem? And this is brand new diehard battery, real good battery. I even keep um, what I thought was a good trickle charger on it. And when we went to go start it, it wouldn't start. It wouldn't start because of the fuel system, which the first thing we thought, go check the fuel system. It wasn't the fuel system. It was a low on voltage. It was just slightly low on voltage. Um, here we are. We're checking everything. It ran right when we parked it there, and now it wouldn't start. It was a little low on voltage, and it wouldn't fire the ignition. So, Faye, Super Duty, brought her jumper pack, uh, a, a Schumacher jumper pack, put her on her. The voltage went up, and it fired right up. All that we're gonna discuss in the how do you store a car for the electrical, putting it away, leave the battery on, leave the battery off, and then the car, the tires, the wheels, and the cooling system. All right, if you enjoyed this video, leave me a, a like and subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know if this is the kind of content you wanna see. As for me, it's time for me to get back to work and start healing as well. Have a good holiday season, Merry Christmas everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.